Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today I want to talk to you guys about live baiting for Wahoo, kingfish, or anything toothy using stinger rigs. Or some like to call them the aha rigs. Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> so I remember the first time I heard that, I got a good laugh. So live baiting for Wahoo is something special for me because... There was a three-year journey involved with it. A three-year journey. So I sacrificed summertime dolphin fishing. I sacrificed my days off where the dolphin and wahoo were biting. And it took a lot of commitment just to not go trolling. Okay, so here's what it really came down to was I needed to pivot because... The bay was in such bad shape at the time, and everybody seems to forget about all the grass that we had, and it was just nasty. And I was a Wahoo trolling fisherman, and when that bay grass started coming out, we had all that bad water quality. The fish were still there, but trolling through that grass was impossible. So guys were using electric reels and all these other different rigs to try to troll. Sorry, not happening. So I made, I had to pivot. And I had to learn how to live bait fish and get fish, get those baits deep and use my downrigger to catch them. So here's the story. And that's basically what it came down to is that I needed to survive this dirty ass grass situation that we had and learn how to catch these fish on live bait. And once I got that first bite, I was addicted. So here is my three year journey. And it's it was quite the journey because I basically gave up everything as far as. Uh, summertime dolphin fishing, uh, when, when when the wahoo bite was easy and no grass, I still committed to learning how to live bait for wahoo. So here's how it went down. I put away the trolling rods for three years. I committed to zero trolling for wahoo. My goal was to be a well-rounded wahoo fisherman, not just another drag and snag wahoo guy that caught them trolling. Now, I needed to learn how to catch these fish using light tackle rigged with live bait. And let me tell you, it was painful. And at times I wondered what the hell went on inside my brain that led me down that path to needing to learn this technique. Now, on those pre prefrontal calm days when everybody was trolling around me and catching wahoo and dolphin and tuna, I had to resist picking up the trolling gear. I remember putting the trolling gear in my truck those mornings and then only to take it back out just so I would not be tempted to use it. And that's the honest to God's truth. <laughs> it, was, it was a painful three years and very costly, very costly. Uh, first, it absolutely sucked watching others catch Wahoo on the troll uh, during this time while I struggled learning. And I have to tell you, it really did suck. I was working, I mean, but I, but I sucked it up and I shut off the social media and I went to work. Uh, so here's how it went. Year one, I caught some fish, but the hookup rate was freaking, I mean, like was freaking horrible. I lost several large fish. I pulled hooks uh, on so many fish. I mean, it was like, oh my God, I pulled so many hooks. Now, back then I had an off season. And what I did that off season after that first year was... I sat down after my last trip of the summer and I said, holy shit, man, now I know why guides and recreational fishermen love to troll because live bait fishing is a pain in the ass and a lot of work, a lot of work. There's so much that goes into it. Uh, I had lost several fish, like I said. I pulled hooks on many. I lost a lot of large fish, like I said. So I used that off season to work through the issues, as I knew, this also required me to educate clients and put a lot of teaching time into the charters. So, so I wasn't really expecting like to pull that many hooks and and lose that many fish and all the chaos because you know I was so used to like trolling with heavy rods and heavy line. So year one ends and I roll into the off season to continue um, live baiting. And I continued live baiting all fall and like all late summer. Anytime I had a day off, I went out and I live bait fished and I practiced on kingfish 
And during that time when I was practicing on kingfish, I was catching, I was learning the mutton fishery and I was learning all this other stuff. I was like, wow, all this stuff's kind of coming into play now. I go, this is awesome. I was like, I was like learning. I was really learning the bottom. It was just, things were starting to click in my brain. I was like, there's slowing down the boat was like the greatest thing I could have ever done. And the bump trolling is like, you, you see everything that's happening out there and things started to click after year one they really did when it came to um live baiting uh so the second year let's go into the second year i was so confident i was going to slay the wahoo and i thought it was going to be the master and like oh my god i was so confident so <laughs> i was wrong big time now we did have some decent decent days but the bad days outweighed the good ones. The clients continued to pull the hooks and miss several fish. However, I did get a small win that winter because I dialed into bite and I found where the fish were staged along the reef line. So I learned how long they stayed in one area and I learned a lot about the fish that year. I really did. The, year, the second year, I really learned about the movements and where they're at and how they staged and you know, I really made some great notes in my logbook that year. And I caught fish on days where I didn't think I was going to catch fish. And so I, I learned some, I learned a lot that year, in other words. So, so going into year three, that off season, I started working with Adrenaline Rods, uh, Brandon Meltzer. And I'm still working with Brandon to this day. And man, have we created some badass fishing rods for fun. just, oh man, we've got some good ones. I'm working on a project with Brandon right now. And stay tuned because it's badass. So I met Brandon. I, some of you guys may know the story, but if, just in case, I met Brandon when I worked um, – when Melinda and I owned Jimmy Jigs USA and Brandon was making my jigging rods for me and he was my connection to the kayak guides. And so Brandon and, and I have been working together for many years. So I had been talking to Brandon at that time about the live bait fishing and then – Brandon was making live bait rods for the kayakers at that time uh, that were fishing the extreme kayak tournaments up there. And the, the kayak guys are badass live bait fishermen. They, they are really good, and I've seen them outfish uh, numerous days, outfish the boats up there uh, in the areas that they fish out of them, out of, and just really good fishermen. So Brandon made some suggestions of what I should be using. So I, we had a couple rods made, the trial. And I wanted to try them out. Like I said, I wanted to make sure that they worked and worked for my clients. So I purchased four rods from Adrenaline designed for live bait wahoo fishing. Amazing rods. They fixed a lot of the issues. <laughs> I want to tell you. I can't even begin to tell you how great those rods are for live baiting. And a lot of the pulled hook situations went away immediately. Clients loved how light they were, and they just made my life so much easier, and people were smiling. I was like, oh, this is awesome. So from there, I started focusing. Once I got the rods all done, and then I started focusing on, on the actual Stinger rig it's, itself. Uh, the rig I used was a standard rig that all guys used, but I was never happy with it. Why? Because the clients were pulling a little bit too many hooks, and I wanted more hookups with the actual treble hook. Uh, rather than the, the main hook. And really, guys, you're really, if 90% of the Wahoo I do catch on live bait rigs, on stinger rigs, are, are on the trebles, the actual stinger. So that stinger is like a needle. It like, it's the absolute best hook when it comes for Wahoo because it digs in anywhere and it just sticks. But you have to keep from pulling the hook, and that's where your live bait rods come into place and fighting the fish with light drag. Uh, maximum for me is three to five pounds a big fish um I'll, I'll get into that kind of stuff at a later down the road so i'm sticking with um we'll talk more about drags and all that good stuff in another podcast so uh so the stinger rig now i put a cable tie on the stinger rig and uh so how it all came about was um with this i, I was sitting at my desk and you know and i usually have my best ideas when i'm sitting at my desk um, during a storm uh, and that year we had a lot of tropical storms during the off season. 
I uh, grabbed a bag of zip ties and secured a part of the stinger rig to the shank of the hook, and I created a modified stiff rig, and and I also um, grabbed some frozen goggle eyes and started practice hook, hooking them at my desk, and I got in trouble that day because the house was smelly. But I, sometimes, you know, you just get that idea, and if you have it like something available, you want to grab it and you want to do it because your mind is right and you just want to see if it works and that's what happened it was really rainy out i grabbed a pack of frozen ass goggle eyes i had in my and in, in my um fridge and i started hooking them at my desk and melinda at the time was traveling she came home and i got my ass in trouble because the house smelled and so all these things come into your mind that was part of my three-year live bait journey <laughs> so that fall i practiced it practiced the um that stinger rig and i gotta tell you it reduced the foul hooks. Like I, I didn't see how sometimes the the goggle eyes they were like spinning around and they get the the stinger gets fouled and you miss a fish and it just but the, that cable tie it could like really did like make a huge difference and that winter I caught my first seventy pound wahoo on live bait. I seen so many things that that winter that I was just like I it was just it was so awesome it was just awesome that last like when it all came together uh, we caught several smaller fish um, 10 to 40 pounds that winter uh, clients pulled very few hooks it was a it was in it was a it was very successful I was like ah so those three years of my life went by fast I missed out on building social media accounts along the way, but I felt I was not ready to promote through social media until I had live bait fishing mast, as well as a lot of other things. So let's flash forward present day. Uh, last Monday, we caught a big, two big wahoo, and both on live bait. One was over 70 pounds, and 30-pound line, 30-pound fluorocarbon, and number five wire, stinger rig. And if you want to learn how to make the stinger rig that I use, you will need to check out the show notes uh, through my website, which is www.goodkarmasportfishing.com. I will have, post a link in the show notes, taking you right to the, um, the page that I have all the information on. Now, with me, I'm like, I give you the basics and I give you a few nuggets, and then from there, in order to get better, I want you guys to build upon what you see in the notes. Okay? And please keep in mind, we're all different, okay? And how you use the information that I present to you will be your way to interpret and apply. Uh, make sure that you guys check out the courses that I have available online at the Good Karma Fishing Tackle Store.com. And if you're looking to learn how to um, catch more mutton snappers, if you're looking to find mutton snapper spots, I've got a course in there called How to Find Deep Water Spots. It does include one mutton snapper area that you can catch um, some nice big mutton snappers on and also to a queen snapper spot as well. And if you want to learn how I power drift um, the ledges and stuff, you can, you, you can purchase the Ultimate Power Drifting course. So the courses, guys, are, are, des are designed to build your fishing intuition, okay? And... The, the courses are going to help you make the right decisions on the water every day like the best in the business. Follow me on Instagram, Good Karma Sport Fishing underscore FL underscore Keys. Uh, check out my website. I've got some good stuff coming for you guys on there that are looking for more information. So check it out at www.goodkarmasportfishing.com. That's all I got. And remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good.